The termite terminal is dead, and you should just use alacrity. Now, this isn't just me clickbaiting you guys to be like, oh, my favorite terminal is the best terminal, and all the other terminals are just kind of terrible. No, no, no. This is something the maintainer of termite has said himself, so he decided to go and archive the repo, so there's going to be no more updates to it, and update the readme to say termite is obsoleted by alacrity, along with explaining why he's actually gone and done this. But he also goes and calls out GNOME, the developers of VTE, the library that this terminal is actually based on, as well as a bunch of other GTK based terminals out there that I'll get into in just a bit. But before we get into that, let's see why he actually suggested Alacrity, because there are a ton of other terminals out there, a lot of them are actually really good, like Kitty for example, I don't particularly like the maintainer, but it's a decent enough terminal. Termite is one of the earlier terminals to get a keyboard-based selection mode. Basically what this would be is, let's say I want to go and select, say, this text right here. Normally I would go and do this with my mouse, and then I could go and copy that. Now, Alacrity also has this same mode in it, and what it lets you do is actually move the cursor that's on your command line here to anywhere on your terminal screen, and use it as if you're in, say, like, a text editor, and go and copy stuff like that. Now, I don't typically use that functionality that often, but I can fully understand why if you're in, say, a tiling window manager, or you just generally use a terminal a lot of the time, why you'd prefer to do that with your keyboard instead. Alacrity also comes with a generic regex hint mode, comparable to Termite's URL hints mode, and the user interface is very much in the same spirit as Termite being a terminal emulator. So you'll see a lot of the terminals like the GNOME terminal or the Windows terminal where they'll have like a bunch of GUI buttons over them and I, I genuinely don't understand why you need buttons in a terminal. If I need to configure it, just give me a config file and I'll do it like that. And Alacrity does exactly that. If you want to do things like tabs and splits, that functionality isn't actually built into the terminal. You have to delegate it to other applications like Tmux if you want something actually integrated with your terminal or maybe even a tiling window manager. And I presume he'd apply the same rule to things like image rendering where most terminals will just go and use Uberzug, but Kitty does actually have support for that. It also just has built-in functionality through its image kitten module. And as any modern project is going to be now, Alacrity is written in Rust. Now, Termite is written in C++, and that's not to say C++ is a bad language, but the maintainer of Termite, or I guess ex-maintainer now, is actually a contributor to the Rust project, and obviously believes it's going to be something bigger in the future. Now let's talk about the base for Termite, VTE, or maybe more accurately, GNOME VTE, otherwise known as libvte. So what this is, is a relatively popular GTK Plus widget for building a virtual terminal emulator, hence the name VTE. And this project is maintained by the GNOME project and is the base for the GNOME terminal, as well as a bunch of other terminals like the XFCE terminal, Sakura, Terminator, and a couple of others that aren't really as noteworthy, but it's a fairly popular widget for actually building a terminal. Now, this is a public library that anyone can go and use to build a terminal with. Just as how, say, anyone can go and take Chromium and then build a Chromium-based web browser. But the developers don't seem to act like this. Some of them seem to treat it as libvt is made for GNOME by GNOME, and that's all it really should be used for. And you can find a lot of people complaining online about the GNOME developers while trying to work with things like libvte. But there's one example in here as well. So a patch written back in 2012 by the developer of Termite. So he wrote a tiny patch exposing the APIs needed for keyboard text selection, hints mode, and other features. Things that a lot of terminals actually just have available now, but in VTE, uh, not so much. So we can actually go and have a look at that one right here. It was last modified in 2018 and it's been set to resolved, won't fix. And as I said, this was a patch. This wasn't him requesting a feature and then expecting someone else to go and work on it. He went and wrote the patch himself and then submitted it to the project. So there was a bit of a back and forth for a couple of years. And then in 2015, we had this comment here, comment... 14. Having the ability to pause the output is quite useful, even in isolation from the rest. That would be enough for the URL hints mode at least, 
Of course, those functions can be given better names than the current internal ones. Making these functions public doesn't make the project harder to maintain, seeing as the coordinates are already exposed through APIs for getting the text selection and curse position. The logic seems to be that if the GNOME terminal doesn't directly benefit, then it's not going to be exposed. I've waited a really long time, almost three years, with no viable path forwards, so the only choice is to fork the project to expose a few simple functions, and then he decided that he's just not going to deal with the GNOME devs anymore, and just went and forked the project, and up until the end of Termite, this is what he was actually using as the base. But this is where the GNOME devs just decided that, well, okay, if you're going to go and do that, won't fix then. So because someone went and forked the project, to fix a problem that you refuse to fix, then they decided that, okay, we're just not gonna fix it then. What sort of like petty way of developing software is that? And from then on, you have a bunch of people asking like, why is this won't fix? This would be really useful functionality, even though the GNOME terminal won't use it, VTE is supposed to be useful for other terminals as well. And there's someone in here talking about, I believe, Void Linux, saying that if they actually want to go and try Termite on Void Linux, they'll have to go and manually compile VTE themselves just to be able to do that. And there's also someone in here talking about the Tilix terminal where someone suggested, hey, keyboard-based selection would be really useful, but because that's also a VTE-based terminal, it's not actually going to happen unless they go and actually install the patch that was written for VTNG. Since those early days of Termite, a bunch of other terminal projects have actually implemented keyboard-based selection, one of those being Alacrity, I believe Kitty has it as well, ST has it with a patch, I'm sure I can think of other terminals, but anything that's basically not VTE-based probably has some way to do keyboard-based selection. It's just that, because as he says here, VT is a terrible base for building a modern, fast, and safe terminal emulator. It's slow, brittle, and difficult to improve. VT is treated as simply being the GNOME terminal widget rather than a library truly intended to be useful to others. But even then, it may just not be a very good base for a terminal anyway. So over on the FAQ for Xterm, there is this massive section in here called Notes on VTE which basically go into all of the problems that exist with VTE. I'm not going to go into everything in here because there is, there is a lot, but it goes into things like how it has really, really poor VT compatibility. So if you don't know what a modern terminal is supposed to be, is a emulator of a physical terminal. Just think of VT compatibility like the POSIX compatibility you see with your shell. And from what I understand, VTE just fails a lot of it. Now, another thing is that there are segments of the VTE code base that are straight up just ripped from other projects. Now, this isn't a bad thing in open source. You can go and do this. But typically when you do this, you also go and credit the project you actually take the code from. But in the case of VTE, it actually took a lot of this code base and then just put no ops in there and remove the implementation. Where they did include the implementation, a lot of the time it also included the bugs. If you want some other fun reading, I recommend reading the section on why the ST terminal by Suckless is also terrible as well. Anyway, back to the main point. He also goes on to call out GNOME and GTK as well, saying that you should avoid them and don't make the mistake of thinking their libraries are meant for others to use. Now, this isn't entirely correct. GTK and the GNOME libraries are entirely fine to use if you have the same vision as the GNOME project. But the Termite dev is not the first person to call out the way that GNOME actually acts around people who want to do things outside of their vision. People like Dirk Hondel, for example, have called out the GTK project saying that their developers are quite abrasive to work with and typically ignore community requests, saying that when he worked with QT instead, they seemed far more open to actually trying out new things. And you had things like, say, LXDE, way back in the past, shifting their focus from GTK over to QT, or you've had programs like Audacious and Wireshark switching to QT as well. Once again, these things did happen quite a while ago. And their main problem is that if you use GTK, no matter what you did, the apps always looked kind of gnome -y. And this led to it really not having that great cross-platform support, because while GTK does run perfectly fine on macOS and Windows, 
people on macOS and Windows expect their software to look like it makes sense on their operating systems, especially in the case of macOS. GTK apps look so out of place on every macOS system. Whereas Qt seems to just have native widgets when it needs to have native widgets. Now, when I speak about GTK, I can only speak from a secondhand experience. I don't actually have any experience using it or working directly with the GTK project team, but I've seen a lot of these same sentiments repeated all over the internet for various different kinds of projects. And I don't see the same sort of problems being there with Qt. Now, that's not to say that Qt is perfect, but it does seem to have a much better better reputation, at least a better reputation that's definitely starting to form. It seemed to have a better community that's more receptive to changes, better documentation, better APIs, and I actually do have a bit of development experience with Qt. It was with C++ though, so my experience with it wasn't great. Also, there is the whole other issue of backwards compatibility, which straight up doesn't exist in GTK, but Qt has some. It has it has some backwards compatibility, which is better than nothing. You'll also see a lot of devs online saying that GNOME is no longer just a desktop environment, it's more like a development platform where if you want to go and support something on Linux, it has to be supported on Linux and also on GNOME as a separate thing because GNOME is sort of becoming like the, I guess, Google of the Linux desktop. Not that they're tracking everyone, that might be a whole nother thing. It's that they're so big that they don't really need to care what anyone else is doing. They can just go and set the standard themselves. One of those things being with XDG decoration support. So this is an optional feature in Wayland that allows you to do server-side decorations, and it's implemented in things like Kwin, which is the base for KDE, and WL Roots, which is the base for basically every tiling window manager on Wayland, at least the ones that are really good. And because it's implemented in these things, which covers most people on Wayland, a lot of software is starting to use this feature. And GNOME decided that this doesn't support their vision, so they're just not going to implement this. And as you may expect, there is a long conversation here about why people actually need this, and it got to the point where they just decided, well, okay, people saying they actually need this and having a really good explanation here about why games actually need this functionality, they decided that, okay, that's enough spam, we're just going to lock the issue. So completely ignore the community request, just it's spam, we don't need to deal with it. So that's basically a long way of saying that GNOME sucks and the Termite developer doesn't particularly like them or any of the project that they're involved with. So this puts Termite in a really weird situation where it's now no longer being developed, but it's in the standard repos of basically every distro out there. So what he said is he would like to see the software getting phased out and actually having maintainers at some point remove it from the repos. Obviously removing it straight away isn't the best idea, but in the case of Arch Linux, they now have a warning when you actually download Termite saying, this software is no longer being maintained, basically use at your own risk. And he also says that he doesn't really want to see anyone go and fork the repo and go and work on this because he just doesn't think VTE is a good way to build a terminal. Currently, Termite works perfectly fine, but at some point, there's going to be some weird dependency issues that do cause it a break. So if you are using Termite right now, you don't have to go and swap to something else. But you should definitely look into other terminals in the near future. And his suggestion is use Alacrity. And you know what? I stand by that suggestion. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And I, I, I know that DT did a video on this already. I also don't care because I wanted to do my own. So before we get those comments, I just want to say that. And also before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim, Donald, Michael, Logan, Andre, Nathan, David, Will, Brennan, Chica, Bento, Jamie, Joseph, Mitchell, Peter, D, uh, Stephen, Thiru, Tony, Tushar, and all of my two dollars supporters. If you'd like to go and support work, there'll be links down below to my Patreon, Subscribe Star, Libre Pay, all that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over T, available basically anywhere. And then this channel is available on Odyssey and BitChute if you like to watch on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.